Mark, thanks for being with us today as you guys uh, finish up the freeway series against the Angels. What has made Tony so spectacular this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately it's it's been his command of all four pitches. Uh, he's, he's found himself in the strike zone uh, much more this year, uh, from even from the beginning, even when he was the first couple of couple innings to start the season because he was a little bit behind. But he, he's been able to throw strikes uh, with all his pitches uh, and with having a four pitch mix, even if one of them is not uh, where he would, you know, like it's ideally be, he's been able to go lean on the other ones. So. Uh, it's been pretty fun to watch his development and growth this year. I think he's really starting to understand who he is as a pitcher. Um, you know, last year was was a grind for him with some injuries and, and really never getting on track. Uh, but this year, it's uh, he's been obviously he's been our, one of our best pitchers, um, you know, year to date. And, and he's going out there and he's doing it in different ways, whether it's been with, you know, the splitter, whether it's been with the slider. Uh, his fastball command last night was probably the best. I think we've seen it uh, dating back to maybe 2020, uh, a game against Seattle. I mean, he was putting it in the right spot uh, at the right times. So uh, it, it's been it's been he's been extremely, extremely um, consistent. And I think that's the best thing that you can ask from from an organization standpoint is, you know, what you're getting out of him. That's great to see. First in the National League to eight wins, the best earned run average in the senior circuit. Uh, it's been fun to watch him develop. And I want to talk more, of course, about Walker Bueller and what a blow that is to your starting rotation. Um, on the IL, probably won't pick up a ball for a couple of months. What does that mean for this club moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, obviously that has a huge impact on, on what we do. You know, he's a big part of uh, our success over the last year, a few years. Uh, and anytime you take away somebody with his caliber and, and his track record and what he can do in big games, uh, it, it's going to leave a hole. But, uh, you know, we've we've had guys step up so far, uh, you know, in the early season when Clayton's gone down and Heaney's gone down. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, as much as you don't want to say it's kind of the next guy up, but it's just the way the game is. And, and we got to move on until he potentially comes back later in the season. But uh, to say that you, it's just another injury, it, it's not. I mean, it's, it's obviously Walker and, and what he can bring to this team, not just from what he can do on the mound when he's pitching well, uh, which I know he hasn't pitched up to the standards that he's, that he's basically set for himself with his, his performances over the years. But, uh, you, know, it, it's a, you know, there's an emotional attachment too. I mean, I think guys know when he's on the mound uh, what he can do and what it means for our ball club. So uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a letdown there. But uh, as, as big injuries have happened over the last few years, uh, the organization's got great depth and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, you know, weather the storm and uh, and we're in a good position come, you know, August or September when hopefully he's, he's back playing for us. Yeah, you get Andrew Heaney back hopefully on Sunday. Now Walker goes on the IL mark the same day that Clayton Kershaw comes off of the injured list. You still have Dustin May on the IL as well. The detractors will say that Tony Gonsolin's going to come back down to earth. You're not certain what you're going to get with Clayton's health. Walker Buehler is now on the shelf. How does the Dodgers depth sustain this and what's your role in all of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are obviously fair questions, uh, you know, just over the last couple of years, again, you know, Tony last year, you know, had a year where it was inconsistent. And so I'm sure there's a lot of uh, comparisons to what he did last year to what he did this year. But, you know, that's why guys have breakout years uh, and career years. So uh, I don't see him, you know, tailing off uh, anytime soon. So I, I think from Tony's standpoint, I think we feel really strong about where he's at. Uh, you know, Clayton's on the way back and he's done this before. Uh, nothing surprises me about what he does. But you know, it doesn't really change what our job is and how we go about preparing. You know, you know, we take who who's on the mound and who we project to be on the mound on those given days, and we try to go put something together that uh, gives us a chance to win ball games. And uh, that's why, as much as it's about sometimes individual performances, it's at this point now, it's it's definitely about uh, as a staff as a whole from the pitching perspective, because everybody's going to be connected. So it's it's about making sure we value every out. Uh, and not, you know, walking guys and giving free bases uh, and getting behind guys because, you know, that has a domino effect on our bullpen, uh, you know, and what guys get pushed up into the games. Uh, we got to get more out. So uh, I think for our standpoint, it, we go out, we prepare the same, we try to match up, we try to do the things that we've been done to the last few years or since I've been here. Uh, and we've had a pretty good track record of doing that. And we just got to make sure that uh, we're really, you know, spot on on what we're doing because I think at the end of the day, I think our just our margins are slimmer, and we got to make sure that we're really mm -hmm. precise when we make moves, uh, and we got to make sure that we're executing the right pitches at the right time. 
Closers will make you keep you keep you up at night, make you scratch your head. Craig Kimbrell, obviously the Dodgers yeah. closer. Uh, they they lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why you're a little bit gray there. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Um, yeah, yeah. Kelly yeah, Jansen, of course. Uh, <laughs> Kelly Jansen had the most saves in Dodgers franchise history. Craig Kimbrell, what have you learned from him, um, having him in the back end of your bullpen? You know, Craig, Craig's been great, and, and I know he we've, he said it, and, and we've all talked about it. You know, I mean, it hasn't been as consistent as he would have liked. You know, he, his work early in the season, uh, you know, was inconsistent just from we were winning some games that, you know, didn't, you know, didn't call for him to be in those games. And then we found some situations where he was in it, and he just didn't really find the, the command that he would like. So uh, he's not – he's never stopped working. Craig's been great. He, he knows himself. He knows what he needs to do to get better. And, it, and it's been a little bit of a challenge. I mean, the, the hard part about being a closer and the hard part about being a reliever in general is you don't have the ability to go out and throw, you know, in-between start side sessions like pitchers and spend four days to try to tinker. You, you basically have to be on call every single day. And so you're trying to make improvements and adjustments – you know, in throwing program or maybe some dry work or maybe slight, you know, a few throws off the mound here and there. So it's, it's a big challenge for relievers, uh, you know, because you, once you get out of spring training, you're always on call. And so last night I thought he threw the ball probably the best he's thrown all year. Uh, I thought the ball, you know, he was over the plate. Every pitch was pretty much competitive, no big misses, um, and he was staying in his lanes. And he felt really comfortable and really confident about the way he threw the ball. So uh, it's not about it's not it's not a question about stuff with him. You know, I think that would be a different discussion if you know we saw the velocity was down or we didn't see, you know, the break on the breaking ball. So mm -hmm. that, all that is there. It, it's just about him just being able to, you know, line it up over the strike zone. And I think he's again. I think all the throws that he made last night were were all really good throws. And I think that's a positive for us. So I think you know once he gets it clicked, I think it, he's off to the races. Uh, but it just hasn't. It's it's been a little inconsistent for him, and he knows it. Uh, but he's been working hard every day to try to get it right, and I thought last night was was really good. Yeah, it gets out of the jam. The Dodgers take the first game of the series. You guys have the Angels, of course, again tonight there at Dodgers Stadium. The hypothetical question, and I know that there's more that goes into it. How would you manage uh, working with Shohei Otani if he was a Dodger, being that he's a two-way player? What are some of the challenges in that? Yeah, I mean, that's a it's a very interesting question. Um, and I don't honestly, I, I don't even know how I would answer that. I mean, you, you got a guy who's got to take time to work on his hitting, you know, and work on that skill set, uh, which is not something that you take lightly. Um, it, it, I think it would be a little bit different if he was more of a reliever, you know, more hitter and then reliever. Uh, you go out, you throw a couple bullpens here, there, and you kind of get in the game for one. But being able to try to, you know, two primary positions and trying to keep those skill sets as refined as he does. I, I can only imagine how long his days get because I'm sure he's spending a couple hours on the pitching and then he's got to turn around and be, spend a couple hours or an hour or so on the hitting and then obviously be ready to pitch in the game or be ready to hit every day in the game. So uh, it, it's pretty remarkable what he's able to do. You see guys do it in college all the time, but that's a way different animal uh, to be able to do it at, <laughs> at this level and at this caliber and, and just the hits last night. I mean, he goes, you know, Tony executes a great fastball down away. You know, he stays on that and hits it 115 off the bat through the shift. And then last night, uh, you know, Craig, or in the ninth inning last night, when Craig throws that, you know, breaking ball, that was a really good strike breaking ball to get it at the count right after that delay with the umpire. Uh, he sits right on that and just laces it for a double. I mean, <laughs> uh, he, he's a really good hitter. I mean, it, there's no doubt about it. And, and he's a really darn good pitcher. So it's, uh, again, it's pretty remarkable how, how athletic and how he can compartmentalize both things and do them really well at this level because uh, doing one of them is, is not easy. But to be able to do two at an MVP caliber is, I mean, we just we've never seen it. I've never seen it. it. You know, so you just, you marvel at what he's able to do. Yeah, no question about it. Mark Pryor in his third season as the Dodgers pitching coach. Tyler Anderson tonight against Reed Detmer's best of luck. Thanks for your time.